All right, good afternoon everyone, good evening. Welcome to the Hershey Dairy Township Historical Society. From bars to bears, a chocolate and white history of hockey in Hershey. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful evening. I had a chance to sneak back and see the collection of memorabilia that's back there. You will not be disappointed. Uh, we have some very distinguished alumni, distinguished guests on both sides here uh, to uh, give you a little overview and a little behind the scenes stuff. We're going to do a Q&A at the very end of this with the alumni. I'm, I'm sure you'd like to talk to them. So uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. And uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce Nikki Soliday, the executive, executive director of the Hershey Dairy Township Historical Society. Nikki. Thank you, Jim. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Historical so Society, I'd like to welcome our guests and thank you for attending this very special e event. Today we've assembled to pay tribute and honor the historical legacy of the AHL's greatest team. The genesis of this exhibit was almost four years ago and was based on a simple conversation discussing the historical value of assembling a community collection of Bears memorabilia. The Society already owned one treasured item which today still retains the greatest value within our collection. That is Lloyd Blinko's Eastern Amateur Hockey League Championship jacket. To make this vision a reality, it has taken the dedication and efforts of numerous key individuals. First, I would like to extend my most heartfelt thanks to Bob Goodman, the sole individual that proposed the development of this exhibit, and whose enthusiasm and reverence for all things Hershey hockey demanded the story be displayed. Second, I'd like to thank our speakers, Mr. McKinney and Mr. Hancock and their families for their enduring and personal commitment to the legacy of the Bears franchise. Next, we are indebted to those whose stories we strive to tell. My thanks to Dave Parrow, president of the Alumni Association, and all the Bears alumni, past and present, for making their stories known, first by their presence, and secondly, by making it tangible through their generosity, loaning their personal collections for all to view and appreciate. I would also like to extend a special thanks to Dan Beaker Stuck for his immeasurable generosity in lending a tremendous portion of his collection to illustrate the rich history of a franchise he is a significant part of. Finally, last but certainly not least, I must thank a number of our volunteers who have been vital in bringing this exhibit to life in this past week alone. In a brief span of time, they have been tremendous offering their support to make sure that this day actually happened. And I'd like to just name them by their name. Diane Freeman, Brad Ginder, Ted Herman, Art Murray, Susan Matan, Janice Steely, and all the volunteers who have done everything from baking cookies to dusting the mannequins and assembling mannequins just so everything can be on display today. Again, I thank you, our guests, for sharing in this special event and allowing us an opportunity to demonstrate all the history that we endeavor to celebrate in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Dickie. Um, up first, he gets the honor of going first. He's uh, synonymous, synonymous with Hershey Entertainment and Resorts, but I think he's mostly synonymous with the Hershey Bears. If you look up at the Giants Center, you'll see a gentleman sitting this, next to Mr. Hatton, Doug Yingst, who uh, wearing a blue suit, a blue sport coat that has been around since when? In the late 80s. The late 80s. <laughs> Give him a lot of credit, it still fits. But uh, with every movement of the puck, with every goal, with every penalty, the man lives and dies. Hershey Bears hockey. So it's my pleasure to introduce Jay Bruce McKinney to kick things off. Thank you, Jim. Actually, uh, Nikki implored me to keep my comments brief. Don't take any any longer than an hour. <laughs> and uh, I can assure you that there will be a whole lot less than that. You know, people have often ask, uh, why is Hershey the kind of the capital of hockey, at least amateur, or uh, uh, minor hockey, in all, the, all of the United States? And um, Articles have been written, most recently the one in New York Times and uh, Sports Illustrated called the Hershey Bears Hockey Club the best minor league hockey team in all of hockey. And I've asked the question over the years, why did a Pennsylvania Dutchman in central Pennsylvania in the, in the early 30s bring hockey to Hershey, Pennsylvania? I'm not exactly sure. 
but uh, we're grateful for the fact that Milton Hershey sat down with John Sullenberger and others, and here we are some almost 82 years since the first hockey game in the old Ice Palace. And we are the beneficiaries of that. And this organization, I think, has done a great job in keeping that alive. Some have asked why we moved or why the hockey team moved from the old Ice Palace to the, uh, to the uh, new sports arena. Uh, actually, it was the convention center, I guess, that was initially the, the first building, then the Ice Palace. And why was that sports arena built? Now, why was a sports arena built? In the mid-30s, that would seat 7,200 people. Um, well, the story is that Mr. Hershey was turned away from one of the games in the Ice Palace. But Tim Leone, I think, uh, found another reason why. And it was very interesting to me as I read through this as to one of the letters that a press person, you know, those great people who come and follow the Bears, and he wrote a letter in uh, 1935. Uh, maybe some of you have heard this. This is from a press man. Dear sir, this is addressed to Milton Hershey. For several years now, I've been a regular attendant at the hockey matches. And despite the fact that I know there is a press reservation waiting there, it is with some trepidation that I journey Hersheyward on the evening of a hockey game for the reason that the crowds are so dense that even if my reservation is waiting, I look, I look like something that cat dragged in by the time I fight my way through the mob. <laughs> now, Mr. Hershey, inasmuch as the game has proved to be such a popular one around here, and they tell me that the fans journey in from points as far removed as Waynesboro and Waynesport, some even staying overnight, why can't something be done to take care of all those who have to stand week in and week out? And what is worse? Those who drive to Hershey to watch the bars, only to be turned away at the door because there isn't even standing room. The effect now on turning them away is good. They make their reservations early, and some even go supperless to get here and time to get a good seat. But it could have been an opposite reaction. There is only one solution, Mr. Hershey. Enlarge the ice palace, and while you're at it, Make it such that the game can be witnessed from any seat in the house. As it is now, very few can remain seated and watch the rapid action taking place on the rink. I am only one, Mr. Hershey, registering this complaint, but I feel that I am voicing the sentiment of hundreds when I say, enlarge the Ice Palace seating capacity and give all those who want to go an opportunity to see the real game of sport. So there might have been this letter, there might have been a number of other reasons that Mr. Hershey and his people decided to build the sports arena. But for whatever reason, um, it was a good, good and great decision. I think there are three things that uh, make uh, hockey and Hershey so great. One of the fans, can you believe the number of fans from all over central Pennsylvania and beyond who have come here? Now grandmothers, grandfathers, sons, and their kids, all following through and the torch has been passed on, fan to fan to fan. And as I look at the standings, as I do every game, I see 30 teams in the American Hockey League. And I believe Oklahoma City is the last, number 30, with an attendance average of 3,500. And there we are, Hershey, right at the top, with an average of 9,800, probably climbing to over 10,000. So the fans, I think, are a great part of it. The second group is the players, and some of them are represented here. The, the hundreds, no thousands of players, really, that have passed through and worn the Hershey Bears or Hershey Bars jersey. Just a great, great group of people. They've added so much to the team and added so much to the community. And there's a third reason, and I think it really comes down to those people who have managed the hockey team over the years. Here we are with the Hershey Bears hockey organization se celebrating 75 years. I think we've had five general managers some National Hockey League teams go through that in five years. And here we are 75 years. I believe John Sollenberger, followed by the great Lloyd Blinko, followed by the great Frank Majors, followed by Jay Feaster, who happens to be a general manager of the Calgary Flames in the National Hockey League, and followed by Mr. Doug Gingst, who I think by far is, is the best uh, general manager 
in the entire American Hockey League. Just has contributed so much in doing so, so well with not just the team, but the youth program in Hershey. And Doug isn't with us tonight because he's in uh, uh, Quebec with his uh, youth hockey team. So he's here in spirit, I'm sure. For those three reasons, I think that has what, what has made hockey so great in Hershey. We welcome you all tonight. Thank you. Wow. Bruce is available for any more information. Just don't ask. About 20 minutes. Any time from pregame, where's his family and his wife? Right, Sally? You don't want to go from pregame till right after the game. That's, that's off limits. Time. Maybe an occasional in between periods. But you got to bring popcorn in the morning. When you think of Hershey Bears hockey, you think of history, tradition, excellence. And our next speaker, uh, not only he, but his family and his, his father, most of all, say that. Uh, very, very true. So uh, our next speaker is Bruce Hancock. He will be speaking on uh, with the uh, memories of his father. And you know his father's a pretty famous guy when Mike Emmerich comes to Hershey to speak to 500 people on the floor of the arena and wears a brown coat to honor his father. So uh, uh, a big part of the community and a good friend of mine, Bruce Hancock, ladies and gentlemen. When I was thinking about this and, and seeing Ernie Corsi here, the kids from the neighborhood, when I was a kid uh, at the sports arena and at the stadium, the soda cups uh, sold to concession stands were decorated with drawings of action figures from the various sports witnessed in Hershey. And, ar and around the rim of, of the cup, it proclaimed Hershey, the sports capital of Pennsylvania. And it was hard to argue with that claim. Uh, the sports arena and the stadium were the venue for any important local contest. The stadium baseball field hosted many games, including national teenager baseball championships. The owner of the Philadelphia Warriors NBA team, Eddie Gottlieb, loved Hershey. The Warriors trained here and played regular season games here, highlighted by March the 2nd, 1962, and Walt Chamberlain's 100 points. Imagine as a kid in Hershey, you had a choice what you were gonna do that morning at the stadium practice field. You could watch the, it was a training home of the University of Pennsylvania football team, the Big 33 Pennsylvania and Texas football team, or you could sa saunter over and watch the Philadelphia Eagles. I, as a kid, we were in a candy store. But I would suggest that over 75 years, it's been hockey and the Hershey Bears that were the foundation of the sporting culture of our community. And hockey and the Hershey Bears who have developed a connection with the sporting public of central Pennsylvania turning into a passion that has allowed it to sustain for 75 years and grow it into the institution that we are so proud of today. In 1975, uh, the late Paul Beers of the Harrisburg Patriot News proclaimed in his book, Profiles in Spence, Pennsylvania Sports, Hershey is the Green Bay of Hockey. It is the most successful minor league franchise of any sport. In the book, Beers went on to say, similar to what Bruce alluded to, it does not make sense that Dutchman and coal crackers could be such hockey enthusiasts, <laughs> especially in a section of Pennsylvania famous for its conservative lifestyle that shuns emotionalism. But as with many things that we are thankful for and many things that are noted in this, in this museum, uh, Mr. Hershey, as viewers noted, saw something. He had a vision and said, if that is what they want, I'll give it to them. Thus, the beginning of what we continue to enjoy today and honor with this exhibit. Personally, the Hershey Bears are more than my favorite team. Uh, the Bears are family, uh, they have family passion. My father had a deep devotion for a very few things as Bruce would know. His family, <laughs> Mr. Hershey, the Milton Hershey School, the United States Marine Corps, and the Hershey Bears. For 44 years, my father was involved and worked for the Bears. He witnessed the first game and the last game of this sports arena. Similar to what Bunny Blinko said in last week's Patriot and Tim Leone's article, uh, the Bears were our family's life. I think I began keeping game statistics as soon as I could write, and I honed my reading skills with the daily sports pages and the hockey news. The mood of our household revolved around the fortunes of the Bears. All was grand after a victory over the hated Baltimore Clippers, really even when you and Ralph, you played with them. And a Saturday night loss to Rochester, Providence, or those Buffalo Bison's made for a dreary Sunday. Thus, the memories from this exhibit presented today are very special. 
In the Bears' history, as Bruce alluded to, we're fortunate to have Mr. Hershey's vision, the arena, and solid supporting management over the years. But my father always promoted, and I would have to agree, that the true asset that has made this 75-year success story has been the players, who have worn the chocolate and white, and the special connection between the organization, Hershey Bears fans, and these players. A connection so special that many who have decided to post their playing days to call Hershey home, and several are here, here today. We've been fortunate to have many great players pass through here who provided championships, great memories, and special moments. And I, along with Bear fans, am grateful and applaud the efforts to all to preserve these memories and their contributions. As one with a sense of pride in our community and a deep passion for our Hershey Bears, I'd like to extend my thank you and sincerest appreciation for those who have chronicled the past 75 years of hockey for our memory. The newly created Hershey Bears Hall of Fame is a wondrous uh, tribute to those who have gone before. And supporters such as Bob Goodman and Tim Leone have written books who are must read for any, any Bears fan. With special thanks today to the Hershey Historical Society for all their efforts in preserving the history of our community. For Bears supporters, the 2011 birthday bash at the arena was truly a highlight. And today, unveiling of the Hershey Bears exhibit is another opportunity to enjoy, remember, and reflect on a 75-year institution that means so much to many of us. So sincerest congratulations to Nikki and all of the members of the Historical Society uh, culminating on this event, which, exhibits, which uh, is unveiled today. Go Bears. <laughs> Why do you have a tough act to follow? <laughs> One thing uh, Bruce won't uh, didn't tell you, he if you're on very 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 special nights, if you look high above ringside, he's an off ice official. You got to look on very special nights or like guest appearance. It's like trying to catch Elvis in the in the building sometimes. So. Our next speaker is uh, probably the most diverse person in the room tonight. First and foremost, he's a tremendous family man. Uh, he is also by day a doctor. Occasionally a patient if he runs into the wall. Uh, he's an AHL linesman, uh, doing many games locally and uh, down through uh, Wilkes-Barre, Philly. He's uh, also a, an author. He's written a, a wonderful book. If you get a chance, please pick it up. Uh, and he's done a great job chronicling, chronicling the Bears' history. So it's a great pleasure to introduce now Dr. Bob Goodman. January 30th, 2011, the Hershey Bears hosted their second All-Star Game of the modern Dave Andrews era. And after that game, it was so much work and effort for Doug Yingst and his staff, they vowed they're not going to have another one. In fact, I sat in some meetings where his staff had reminded him, never again. So when the Bears turned to the 75th anniversary of joining the American Hockey League, they had to decide what they would do that would uh, be able to compensate and, and prepare them for this magnificent event. And what they decided to do was have an outdoor game, a winter classic of their own. Not one piggybacked with the NHL, but all by themselves. So the Bears and the Penguins on a Sunday evening played a game. And associated with that game, of course, is an alumni game that was held on a Saturday afternoon. And players such as Tim Tukey, Mark Lofthouse, Brian Dobbin, and the local players here came from all over North America to come back to Hershey on a Saturday to don the uniform one more time to skate in front of their fans. As part of that team were goaltenders, two goaltenders, one a 55-year-old goaltender from the 1980 Cup team, Dave Parrell, that was facing players 20 years his junior, that was supposed to play five to 10 minutes of a hockey game, but because the other goaltender was not able to, kindly put in a full 30 minutes. And in addition, the second goaltender was Freddie Cassivi, who put on the display that second half of the alumni game that he went from being a hero to many of the fans in Hershey 
but they were awed by his performance that he actually became a legend in their mind. There were days afterwards that people were talking to me at work about Freddie Cassivi and how he played that day, and he should actually be wearing the uniform right now. For the team. <laughs> and really that story to me is the essence of what this is about, the legends. This, this team of 75 years of joining the American Hockey League, the current and former players who have become legendary within this community, and the fans who have an opportunity to see and interact with them. And what I want to do right now is to introduce a few of these legends that are amongst you, so that you can see and talk to them and, and, and tell them stories or ask for an autograph and that are amongst us here. First of all, Mr. Steven Drazek. Sir, please. He's the first round draft pick of the Detroit Red Wings, and he split his pro career between the World Hockey Association and the American Hockey League. And he did that so that he jokes he played enough games between the two teams that he never played enough in one league that he gets a pension from either of them. <laughs> His three seasons in a Bears uniform include the 1973-74 Calder Cup team, where he won their cup with that team. And Steve is the greatest of storytellers. Spend 10 minutes with Steve and you're going to walk away with a lifetime of memories. Thank you, Steve. Mr. Dave Paro. Drafted in 1977 by the Boston Bruins, a second team all-star in the 1977-78 Rochester Americans. He was on the 79-80 or 79 -80 Calder Cup Championship where he and Gary Innes split goaltending duties during the playoffs, bringing home the Bears Cup. He had 157 games played with a Hershey uniform and 60 wins, ranking him 11th all-time in Bears history. He's also the president of the Hershey Bears Alumni Association, and much of this exhibit would not be possible without him first donating his pads and then reaching out to other the alumni, giving us access to them to be able to talk to them and have them donate some things, donate some things as well. Thank you. Dave Parrow. <laughs> Freddie Cassivi. Originally drafted by the Ottawa Senators, he won a Calder Cup with the Chicago Wolves in 2002. <coughs> He played from the Hershey Bears from 2005 to 2008. His single season, his single best season with the Hershey Bears was 34 wins in 2005-2006 en route to the Calder Cup at that time. That garnered him the Jack Butterfield Trophy for, MV, uh, for playoff MVP. He has 232 AHL wins, which ranks fifth all-time in the league, and he has eighth all-time in shutouts in the league with 24. His Hershey record is 246 games played, 113 wins, ranks him fifth all-time in the Hershey Bears history. Freddie Kassidy. <laughs> Mr. Ralph Keller. He played the majority of his career was spent, his prof professional career was spent in Hershey. 737 games played, 103 goals, 305 assists, and 408 points, dwarfing and the second place defenseman who has well below 300 points. He's third all time in Bears history in penalty minutes, third all time in games played. In 71, 1971, he broke the league scoring record when he scored his 81st goal for a defenseman. He became the first defenseman in AHL history to score 100 goals in a career. In 1969, he was named the first team all-star. In 1973, a second team all-star. He was on the 1969 Calder Cup team, and he captained the 1974 Calder Cup team. His number is retired and hanging from the Giants Center, and he went into the inaugural class of the Hershey Bears Hockey Hall of Fame. Mr. Ralph Keller. <laughs> Mr. Mitch Lamoureux. Started his professional career with the Baltimore Skipjacks, where he joined the league and broke, or excuse me, became Rookie of the Year with 57 goals. He was named the second team All-Star at that time in 1980 and garnered the, Fred, the uh, Red Garrett Award for that. In 1988-99, he received the Fred T. Hunt Award for dedication and sportsmanship to the sport of ice hockey. 1988 Calder Cup team, he had 413 games played, 194 goals, 254 assists, and 448 points in a Hershey Bears uniform, ranking him seventh all time. His 105 points in 93-94 still fifth in Bears history. He entered the AHL Hall of Fame in 2011, 
and his number is retired as well, hanging from the Giants Center. Mr. Mitch Lane. Now, quite honestly, how do you introduce the greatest player in the history of the American Hockey League? Mr. Willie Marshall. His NHL records, all of them still standing, all of them records for the American Hockey League. 523 goals, 852 assists, 1,375 points. He was a first-team All-Star in both 1956 and 58, a second-team All-Star in 1962. Got the John B. Sollenberger Award for most points of the season in 1958. His number is retired as well at the Giants Center, hanging from the, with a banner. Entered the inaugural class of the Hershey Bears Hall of Fame in 2012, the AHL Hall of Fame in 2006. There is a trophy named after him that the AHL awards each year, the Willie Marshall Award for the player who scores the most goals in the season. His Calder Cups were in 1958 and 1959 with the Hershey Bears. Mr. Willie Marshall. <laughs> and finally, an introduction from a player from years ago, Mr. Lloyd Blinko. He was uh, associated with a franchise that ultimately came to Hershey Bears as a player coach executive from 32 until his retirement in 1973. He's a native of Grand Mere, Quebec and he played for the inaugural Hershey Bars Hockey Club in 1932-38, to 38, then became coach of the Hershey Cubs for one season. The late Blinko served as president and general manager from the Bears from 1949-73 to 73, and won the J.C. Hendy Award as the league's outstanding executive in 1968-69. The Hershey Bears Hockey Hall of Fame plaque was presented to the Hershey Dairy, Tins Ta Dairy Township Historical Society today by his daughter, Diane blinko Yorty and Judy Blinko-Schwartz. And this is his <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'd like to bring up Dave Parrow now, president of the Hershey Bears alumni. I'm a man of few words. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Nick and her uh, staff for putting this all together. I'd like to thank Mr. McKinney, Bruce, uh, your dad, Brent, uh, all the, the uh, former players that played here that paved the way for us players that played a couple years ago and are playing now. If it wasn't for them, uh, this wouldn't be uh, where we are right now. Uh, Milton Hershey, got to give him credit. I'll start with Milton Hershey. Greg Mace for his coverage of the Bears, Tim Leone for his coverage in the newspaper, and lastly but not least, the fans. If it wasn't for you, the fans, this wouldn't be possible. So I'd like to thank you. Thank you very much. I just thought that was important to say. Well, there, there's uh, three other people in the room tonight, but before we hit any other questions, Don Scott. Randy Waybright, Randy's in the back. You don't go away, Randy, you're disappearing. <laughs> Don Scott, two longtime off ice officials, and, a, and a, the guy that was just kind of introduced there, Danny, step up here a little bit. Dan Strawhecker. Danny's a guy that uh, probably put in a thousand hours uh, leading up to the Outdoor Classic, and uh, he and his staff deserve a tremendous round of applause. <laughs> But Don Scott and Randy, if you're looking for some Bears history, Don, you've missed how many games in uh, and your wife's not very happy about that. She's actually very happy about that. Does, that, does anyone else have any questions? Anybody at all have anything? These guys will be around for a little while. Bobby will be here for a little bit. Uh, Nikki, anything else? It's, uh, with, uh, thank you so much for coming and being part of this very special night. I can tell you, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, the last couple of years, part of the Historical Society of had a Joe chance McDonald. to this building. If you do get a chance, me in, when everybody's not here, please come. It is a wonderful experience. The, the Dick I'm Winters good. Memorial, the, the whole last setup time here, I had the trains, I, I brought my I wife and daughter here to you were at Christmas time. Yeah. Please come up and support the Historical Society. So it is my pleasure now. Are we opening?
Gates are open. We're unlocking the gate to the history from oh, yeah. bars to bears, yeah, I, chocolate I, I, and white history of Hershey, uh, uh, hockey and Hershey. So please go I'm enjoy. Just, Gentlemen, thank you so much.